And that is why I know that this has so much potential, because... Is this Nintendo's new Nintendo Switch accessory a piece of cardboard? We're going to be talking about all that and more, but first... Coffee. If you're interested to know what today's coffee blend is, it comes out of this orange parcel. Ethiopian pictures on the front, it says Arabica Ethiopia Harar. Oh, it's actually pretty good. So you may have noticed that Nintendo released a video and it was announcing like the first information about Nintendo Labo, which let's be fair, is not an English word, it should be lab, but labo means laboratory, laboratory, in Japanese. In addition to having a bit of a weird name, where's that cardboard I just threw away? <coughs> okay, it's not a new games console, it's not a virtual console, it's not Metroid Prime 4, or whatever they were calling it, it's this piece of cardboard. And why is that exciting, and why is, or why is that not exciting? If you didn't watch the video, they were saying that basically you get some sort of game for your Switch. You pay I don't know how much money and they'll give you a cardboard cutout which you can assemble yourself and that way you stick the cardboard to the Switch. And it does cool stuff like having a remote control car or some kind of... Actually I can't remember what exactly you can make. Nintendo Labo. Alright, so there's two different types of things that you can buy. There's the variety kit and there's the robot kit. I'm going to look at the variety kit first because I think this is the main attraction here. You can make things like a remote control car, a fishing rod, a house, a motorbike, or a piano. And this is actually kind of exciting stuff because I think as gamers we get excited about the fact that a new games console is coming out. But when people try to make a games console that does other stuff like internet browsing or having a camera built in or using it for drawing or something, often those things fail, like PS Vita, unfortunately, none of those features were anything anyone wanted. And also, if you wanted to take a picture or draw, there were much better devices for it. So when Nintendo comes out and says, Yo, we've made this games console that has a camera, it's called the Wii U, and you're going to be able to like Skype people on it, everyone was like, we are not 100% sure that we want that. But with this, Nintendo Labo, I'm actually quite excited about this. It looks like they're actually thinking about kids and what kids want. And essentially, you asked for it. The way that we treated the release of the Nintendo Classic, the Nintendo Super Nintendo Classic, these were massive purchases for Christmas. Everyone wanted one for Christmas and I'm pretty sure most people weren't playing them all year round. It was like a Christmas novelty. If you want to give a kid a safe, potentially educational toy, this is exactly what you need. At the end of this discussion, I want to kind of decide whether I think this is going to be a massive success or a massive flop. Because there's, there's, there's many ways that this could really be amazing. If they expand upon this, so it's not just you know, you buy the piano kit, the RC car kit, the fishing rod kit, and you do these kind of forgettable experiences that you throw away the next day. That would be a little bit of a shame. But if they came up with an app that allowed you to program what is essentially very inexpensive accelerometers. It's hard to find an easy to use version of the accelerometer, but the Wii Mote, there was Bluetooth, you didn't really have to hack it, you could use it and all sorts of really creative applications. And if they made an official application where you could go and you could program something on your Switch, like if it tilts left to make a low sound, if it tilts right to make a high sound, kids could come up with really innovative stuff. The Switch is what I consider like a safe place. Like if I need to give a niece or a nephew something to play with, if you give them a phone, 
then you never know when they're going to call emergency services <laughs> or they're just going to call someone on your emergency contact list. You would give them Switch, which is a safe. It doesn't have the internet browser, it doesn't have YouTube, it doesn't have Facebook, it doesn't have Twitter, but it has loads of entertaining games. Things that kids want and kids enjoy and can enjoy safely and that's why I think Nintendo Labo could be really amazing if they expand and they don't make it disposable. So for sure, things like the fishing rod and the motorbike, those look like they're going to be games. But if you look at the thing like the house, the RC car and the piano, these look less like games and more like innovative ways to understand how you can use sensors to build devices. The making stuff part of toys which can be educational and I know recently, like even at family holidays, we've bought stuff for kids that was, you know, outright educational. It's called like the science kit and the kids aren't that interested in it because they don't know what's exciting about it. But the Switch is already exciting to kids. They already know that it has fun stuff on it. And so there's the assumption that a making kit on the Switch would also be enjoyable. Plus, they're already really enjoying games like Minecraft. Huge, huge educational aspects already built into it because of, you know, redstone and that sort of stuff. I mean, even if they don't make a custom piano, even if they only make the piano built into here, if they were clever with the way that they build the game part of that, you could actually have kids learning, you know, they could be doing oral training for their ears, they could be learning scales, they could be learning how to write melodies, how to write chords, how to understand all aspects of music using a very entertaining looking cardboard piano, which essentially is all you need. You don't need a $500 standing upright loud piano, but something like this Nintendo piano could get kids really, really excited. And not even just kids, anyone who owns a Switch who's interested in music and never had an opportunity, you've already got the device that you need. All you need to buy is this cardboard kit. And I'm absolutely certain that once this is a possibility, people will come up with their own versions, and I'm really, really certain that Nintendo would be open, well, or rather, I hope that they would be open to the idea of people making their own cardboard kits and selling them as official Nintendo products. I think that would be really amazing. However, there is always a downside, and there are many ways that this could massively, massively fail. If they make this a disposable product, a hey, let's see if people enjoy making remote control cars. And they do, but then they don't buy anymore. There's no downloadable content. There's no way to get people to subscribe. There's no way to make continued money out of it. It could just disappear. And I think that would be a massive, massive missed opportunity because this could be educational in a fun way. Because there are many ways that education can be not fun, but learning itself is not not fun. Uh, there's a lot of double negatives in there. Like personally, I find learning new instruments or learning new ways to play video games or learning how to film videos, all sorts of things, learning how to draw, stuff like that. I find that really exciting, even if no one is making it fun. And with the Switch, it's already supposed to be fun. It has that idea that everything that happens on here is one, generally safe, and two, a lot of fun. Well, apart from that Senran Kagura game, which is probably not massively safe, but I think you can set parental control. But this is how it could massively fail. If Nintendo doesn't see how the community could massively add to this, they're just going to sell it, it's gonna be fun, they are gonna hopefully get some first parties and third party companies in to make some games, and hopefully if those games sell well, they'll continue to make more. You know, it's just this novel thing that we did once. Hopefully, it won't be like that, because I see massive, massive potential. And why? Because the Nintendo Wii did it incredibly, incredibly well. The Wii Remote was inexpensive, it was easy to access because Bluetooth was wide open, you could connect it to a Mac, you could connect it to a PC. I was using it in my own studies at university to create devices when I didn't have a cheap accelerometer nearby. And not only is it a cheap accelerometer, it's a cheap accelerometer attached to a Bluetooth receiver. So it's a wireless accelerometer. Do I have a Wii remote here? I might have a, I might have a Wii remote here, hold on. I'm quite excited about this because now I get to brag about a project that I did once using a Wii remote. And the reason I'm gonna brag about it is because it still has the label. I don't know, it's a little bit too bright right now, but you can see it says B and it's already yellowing because of the age and the plastic. But I wrote a piece of music where 
accelerometers were connected to microphones. So we had a microphone attached to this, and I had people like sucking sound out because it was recording and it was recording it was recording audio, but it was also recording the data of how far you pulled your arm back, and that was changing the volume of the music. That's the sort of thing that happened because of cheap accelerometers like this. And that is why I know that this has so much potential, because something this simple, which was never ever intended to be used outside of the Wii. The fact is, you can already connect this to your computer or Mac using Bluetooth, and people will come up with this stuff anyway. So. Instead of waiting for the community to just build something that Nintendo can't make any money out of, if Nintendo can make their own system that lets you customize using these accelerometers, you could put it inside this coffee box. You could close it in there, and then every time I tilt this, it could make lightsaber sounds. It could go wow, wow, wow. It could make cool sounds, and that's because I put an accelerometer and a piece of cardboard, and that's what this Nintendo Labo could be. That's why I think it's really, really exciting. They could ruin it by not making it open. They could ruin it by not promoting smaller companies who want to come up with innovative ideas. The more money Nintendo receives from Nintendo Lab, the more innovative products that we're gonna get like this. Soon, you will have people interacting with their games consoles in ways that do not involve just staring at the screen and tapping them. Because if you've got kids or if you work with children at all. It's kind of depressing. Once you give something really absorbing like this to a kid, they're stuck like this and they don't want to talk to anyone or they just want to get involved. And even if it's educational, it makes you think like, oh no, the kids are gone now because they're stuck on the Switch. But if there were ways to say, hey, you know that Switch that we bought you? Why don't you go and make something using Nintendo Lab? You found that fun before. And they may be like, yeah, I'm up for doing that. And then now they're doing non-screen based activities. You know, they could be, where's the cardboard now? Again, they could be using something like this to build their own Mega Buster. For example, let's just do it right now. If I build myself a Mega Buster. This is, le this is legit why Nintendo Lab is so exciting. I could actually just build this on my arm. I could customize it with lots and lots and lots of buttons, and then I could just take my Nintendo Switch controller, slide it in here, and then every time I, I you know, flick my wrist, it presses the button, I could go pew pew pew, or I could even just go like, like this. When there's a massive change in acceleration, then just make a pew 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 sound, right? And I could go pew pew pew, just like this, and kids would love it, adults would love it, I would love it, clearly I'm neither of the two. I'm getting really, really excited about Nintendo Lab, and if you think that it's a random novel thing that's just going to disappear, then you might be right, but I am, I'm hedging my bets that Nintendo Lab is going to be only a small part of how Nintendo sees entertainment really branching away from just screens. Because right now, this screen, if you take this off, it really isn't a whole lot different to what you have with an iPad. Just a device, a screen, a touch screen, and you're just sitting there tapping it. Essentially, Nintendo Labo may sound like a small novelty, oh, uh, we've found some sort of group on Kickstarter and we funded it and then we bought them out and then now we've got this cardboard game thing. It's not gonna be like that at all. Switch has built into its, like, ethos. The fact that you are going to break away from the TV, break away from the screen, break away from the device itself. Use the device to go and find more fun using accessories, like let's turn a coffee pouch into a lightsaber. But yeah, Nintendo, I'm waiting for you to let me create a lightsaber out of my coffee pouch. Make it happen.